came back to my place vacant and her gone. A note was on the counter saying she found someone way better and she's way more set for life than I am. She made the worst mistake of her life. And how hurt we both are. I am getting some sort of satisfaction from thinking she's miserable. I am thinking they assumed my cousin was my new girlfriend or something. Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to send in your story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you went through something, whatever it is, uh, you may have a story um that someone else could be going through or they have recently gone through and they feel like listening to your story hey i made the right decision or i need to make this decision because this seems like the right decisions so people just need to hear that other people are going through it like you know it's, it's good to hear if someone else is going through something that you're going through and you can relate and It'll help you with the decision that you need to make. So feel free to send in those stories. And if you've sent in stories, feel free to send in updates. I've been noticing since I've been doing updates, I started doing updates the beginning of December and there's more coming in and there's more stories coming in. So feel free to send those stories in, send it to that email. But you guys read the title, so let's get into it. So subject, subscriber story, military, revenge, leveling up. Hey True Story Nation, been watching your videos and I'm glad to hear men are taking the red pill and becoming better people for it. I guess it's time for my story to save others and be a cautionary tale for those who aren't on the red pill yet. I wish to stay anonymous, don't need the clout, but the story does. So, met my ex-girlfriend while I was in the service. I was in the Navy as a submarine machinist, sub mechanic. I was also a qualified diver. So I stayed fit, 21, three years of service, and had a good amount of life options for success. In 2016, same year I met my ex, Nadia, at a coffee shop I went to before going to work. We hit it off immediately. From her words, I was the perfect Spanish romance fantasy she wanted. I'm Puerto Rican and Colombian, with a thick Spanish accent. We settled into my place six months after meeting, and I thought things were well until I went on deployment. Keeping a long deployment short, I did my job and came back to my place vacant and her gone. A note was on the counter saying she found someone way better and she's way more set for life than I am. She made the worst mistake of her life. I didn't give her access to my funds, which had pretty much doubled since I was underwater for six months and not spending. I used that to pick myself up. I invested money into Tesla and Polestar. I also invested into a clothing company with a friend, Naim, specializing in New York fashion, since we both were raised in the Bronx. Pop Smoke, a New York rapper, ended up endorsing our clothing. Wow, yeah, I know who Pop Smoke is. He ended up endorsing our clothing and we basically skyrocketed from there. 2018 was an amazing year for me. Maluma, and Nicky Jam, famous Spanish rappers worldwide, also endorsed in the company. And I made friends in high places. My friends and I made so much, and I was able to afford my dream car, an Aston Martin DB11, at the age of 23. Pretty unreal. As I laid in a new condo, watching boxing fights, and a model, Claudia, sleeping on my chest, I just wondered how Nadia was doing with whoever the F she was with. <laughs> I found my answer two weeks later. After I got my DD-214 separation paperwork from the Navy, after honorable service, Naim invited me to a party to celebrate Naim's engagement. I love partying and looking good, so I accepted and dressed as best I could. It was also Halloween party, so I, so I dressed as the Phantom of the Opera, Masquerade Man, 
with an expensive suit and jewelry. My surprise when I got there, a good amount of people knew who I was. I'm not really the type to be in the spotlight. That's more my friend. But it was good to get recognized for my work. People are dancing and I step away to get myself a drink. And from behind, a soft hand goes over mine and a small kiss to my neck. And in my head, Vietnam D-Day level flashbacks occur in my head. Only one woman I know touches me like that, Nadia. I turn to see her, and she looks pretty good. Hey stranger, long time no see. I put on my poker face, even though inside I wanted to paint the walls red. If you catch my drift, oh man. I nod and greet her, saying she looks well. She says she hears I'm doing well for myself, and I coldly concur with her statement. Saying I'm pretty well for myself. She starts talking to me about how she recently got divorced. As the man she left me for fled to another country after finding out he got Nadia pregnant. Wow. I chuckle as I hear the story. Imagining the man swimming to Europe just to get away from her. <laughs> Nadia then tears up. Saying she misses me. That I was on her mind constantly. That she's sorry for what she did. And she's ready to settle down and have me all to herself. That she notices I look even better than when she saw me in 2017. As she's giving me her sob story, Naim walks to me and he introduces me to Nadia. Not knowing we even knew each other, I tell Naim in Spanish she's a whore. And what she did to me during my time in the Navy. Naim laughs and tells me he even piped her down and tossed her. He tells me that while he was giving her back shots, she told him she dated some D-head in the service, and she took him for what he had and left, and wished he saw the reaction of the loser. Nine, I am that loser. His eyes widens, and an evil grin comes over his face. <laughs> Nine, knowing when he saw my face, knew I was planning some petty crap, knew to wish me well, and walked away. Nadia, not knowing a lick of Spanish, tells me that that was hot, not realizing I'm crap talking her. She also didn't know Naim told me what she spoke of me. Nadia professed her love to me afterwards and wanted me to take her home to show how much she missed me. Mm, mm, mm. Little did Nadia know, I took Claudia to the event and Claudia finds me and Nadia talking and Claudia kisses me in front of Nadia. Wasn't a part of my plan, but I look at Nadia, pissed that someone else is on me. Claudia then introduces herself and Nadia coldly was asking how she knows me. Claudia explains how she met me at one of the business trips and how we consistently see each other. Nadia instantly gets jealous and tells Claudia my best girl ever was Nadia. <laughs> and Claudia doesn't hold a candle to what Nadia can do to me. Claudia, realizing who Nadia is in relation to me, decides to call her friends over, all of which who like me or who have had sex with me. They all greet me and kiss me on the cheek or lips. And with every girl that passes by, Nadia becomes more demoralized. She eventually storms out and Claudia kisses me, asking if I was enjoying making her mad. Of mother effing course, I was enjoying it. Claudia then was asking if we can go back to my place. I nod and bid farewell to Nime and head to my car. Funny enough, Nadia is by my car, taking clout pictures to put on her Instagram. She gets startled when I use my keys to start the car, and then realizes who the car belongs to. As I open the passenger seat for Claudia, and then get into the driver's seat, Nadia starts cursing me out, saying she can't believe I'd choose this girl over her, and instantly snaps. I say to her, Nadia, you belong to the streets. Your pee is loose because you had a kid with a deadbeat. You left me while I was deployed. You got deed down by my friend and had the nerve to crap talk me while you was piped down. Naim always wears his Tims, so I know he was stepping on your head while he was blowing your back out. <laughs> you are sad, depressed, stupid. I'd call you a Spartan. But the only thing you gladiate is glizzies. Nadia, you're literally a glizzy gladiator. And the 300 probably ran through your open legs anyway. I then blasted some music and stormed off. I haven't seen her since. But Naim says I roasted her so bad she was sobbing in the driveway. 
Barely able to form sentences. Well, true. That's my story. Fellas, stay on your purpose. Women will always be women, but the boys will always be boys. Keep strong together and we can overcome anything. In a society today where women say they don't need men, we should step back and see how badly they perform without us. Men built what we have today, the houses we sleep in, cities we live in, social structures we reside in, all created by powerful men. If you stay red pill, you'd only add to the history of men who've ascended and stayed on their purpose, strong and independent like nature says we should be. Love the red pill, true story nation, and I always will be one of the boys. Cheers, my G's. Let me give my thoughts. Savage, savage. I need to make a savage playlist too. I got some savage stories on here. Man, salute to you. I love, I love stories. When I, when I, when, you, when I get you guys' emails, and I see I leveled up. I came out stronger, things like that. I love those stories. Those are some of my favorite stories. Salute to you, man. Um, wow, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. You had you had some some big names actually. You know, support your your you and your friend's uh, brand. You said you invested in his uh, clothing line and everything. So I guess you were a partner or whatever. But yeah, like Pop, I know who Pop Smoke is. Uh, R.I.P. to him. He passed away. He. Um, actually didn't start to get to know him until right up until he passed away. Uh, it was some stuff on the internet about him and I started listening to his music. I recently learned who Nicky Jam is through Battle Rap. Um, I don't know if anybody follows Battle Rap, but he just uh, battled a uh, Battle Rapper on Legends Only. Um, but yeah, I checked that out. Yeah, so I know who Nicky Jam is and I, I listened to the podcast he was on too and heard his whole life story very interesting he's he's pretty big time like wow that, that that guy gets like a lot of views you know on the internet in his videos like billions of views i hear so wow that's pretty that's pretty awesome you definitely leveled up definitely leveled up um i love when there's good revenge and karma this is like a mixture of revenge and karma she thought she was leaving you for something better. I can do better than you. I'm better than you. I, I know men who make more money than you. You're nothing. I'm leaving. And you leveled up. But here, here's the thing, too. I, I want you guys to pay attention to. Let's say she never left you. She never left you. And stayed with you. When, whatever. Would you have invested in any of those companies? Would you have invested in Tesla? I've heard people talk about investing in Tesla and and how great they're doing. So when you say you invested in Tesla, yeah, I, I believe you. I believe you actually made a lot of money doing that. But would you have had the money to do so? I know you saved money when you were underwater for a while. Um, but as soon as you would have you would have come back home, she's there. She would have. Oh, let's buy this. Let's do that. Let's get engaged. Let's get married. You probably wouldn't even have been thinking about investing. You know what I mean? Like, so she did you a favor, even though she's trying to monkey branch. The, the branch broke and she tried to come back and she had to deal with that revenge and that karma. Man, it just goes to show, like you said, in the end, stay on your purpose. They'll come. The women, will come. they'll come man. they'll come. Stay on your purpose and do your thing. Do what you want to do. Invest like you. Um, what do you want to do in life? Whether you want to go to college, be a motivational speaker, whatever it is. Do that and put 110% into it. And don't stop. It's worth it. Then, well, I, I got some at home, home consistent, you know, um, cooch that I can smash whenever I want. Like, you're going to get tired of that anyway. Focus on your purpose, please. You're absolutely right. Focus on focus on your purpose. Salute to you, man. I really, really enjoyed this email. Thank you for sending this in. Guys, let me know what you think about this email in the comments. 
and let's go ahead and check out another email all right guys we are back with another email this is email number two and it is it is actually an update to a story i did if you guys remember i found out my girlfriend had two boyfriends um and i'll put the link to this in the cards and i'll put it in the description as well um but in that in that story it's where he talked about how he was just madly in love with this girl when he first saw her. She had the cutest dimples, little voice, amazing body, yada, yada, yada. You know, and he had his friends telling him like, hey, uh, I don't think you should trust her. I think she's cheating. And, uh, and, and she was passed out drunk at his house. And um, he went through her phone and found out she actually was cheating. And then, you know, when she came back to his home, after he dropped her off and she came back to his home and she's crying, begging him to forgive her and all this stuff and he savagely says please leave my home you're making noise it's that story and if you have not heard it um you can check it out up here and the cards are in the description but uh he's back and i think he wants to clarify some things and speak about some other things or some updates so let's go ahead and check this out so hi true story nation i just want to thank you for giving us a platform to share our stories talking to someone about this is a lot of help and I feel like I should give you an update on what has happened the past few weeks. It has been hard. In my last email, I kept referring to her as my girlfriend because it was so hard for me to come to terms. It's an uphill battle and even though I don't show it, I have to fight the urge to see her or talk to her. I am slowly adjusting and finally got rid of her stuff and all the stuff that smells like her. I packed up her millions of hair products, socks, etc and told her friend to pick them up. I am focusing more on work and school to try and get my mind off things, and a few people suggested getting into a new hobby. Yes, listen to them. They care about you. They care about you, okay? That they're, they're telling you to do the right thing. I talked to my friend who tried to warn me about her, and he said the other guy was bragging about dating her to someone else. That's how he found out. I decided to get his contact information and tell him what happened in case she tried to go back to him. She started talking to him around the time she started talking to me. She gave him hope in the beginning. Then as time went on, she was not attentive and obviously stringing him along. She would go for weeks without talking to him. He would beg to see her and she always used the excuse of being a busy medical student. She treated the guy like nothing, but he still kept trying. She later told him that she was serious with someone else and was in love with someone else so she couldn't continue having contact with him. He said he had a feeling something was wrong, so he didn't contest and just let her go. I won't lie, this gave me hope and had me thinking about going back to her, but I decided to sleep on it and see how I would feel the next day. I am glad I made the choice not to act on my impulse. Looking back, I have realized that I may have spoiled her. I was always the one going after her. I was the one that pushed her and even though we hardly fought, I was always the one apologizing and just wanting to be with her all the time. I was not overcompensating because I thought she was out of my league. I get my fair share of attention. I am tall and I work out, but being Korean, I get a lot of girls that want K-pop, K-drama boyfriends and will go out of their way to call me words that are used in my culture and basically annoy me. I am not saying she didn't show any care either. She was very attentive, understanding and took care of me and frankly I miss her. When I said she was the best girlfriend I ever had, I was not lying, but I may have shown her I cared a little too much because after the breakup, she went quiet for a while. Obviously expecting me to go back to her as usual. Yep, that's exactly what she was doing. But when she realized that I wasn't going to, she drunk called me and was talking about how I don't care about her anymore. <laughs> how could I just throw her away the way I did without a second thought like she meant nothing? I laughed at her. I told her I was busy and I cut the line. <laughs> Savage. Her friend the next day called me saying my ex couldn't stop crying and was going to get sick if she continued. I straight up told her I didn't care. Her little friend was none of my business. I almost reached my breaking point when I ran into her today. That's what prompted me to write this update. We bumped into each other at a local supermarket. She was with her friend and I was with a female cousin. 
I saw her and just gave her a polite wave. When we walked away, she started sobbing and her friend was trying to comfort her. I don't know what her friend said, but she nodded and left the supermarket. I know I shouldn't be feeling like this, but I felt terrible and I really wanted to hug her. I almost went after her, but I am the type of person who hardly acts on impulse. Hard as it may have been, I watched her walk out. Her friends didn't try to talk to me either. When we got into the parking lot, I saw her in the car and walked towards it because I was curious and I saw her with her head on a steering wheel and it looked like she might have been crying. This may sound evil, but even though I don't like the situation we are in and how hurt we both are, I am getting some sort of satisfaction from thinking she's miserable. I am thinking they assumed my cousin was my new girlfriend or something. By female logic, I'll probably be called trash. I can't say I feel good, but I am proud of myself for not letting my emotions make decisions for me. My story may be nothing compared to a lot of stories I have seen on your channel, but I have learned a lot through this experience and hope other people may learn too. Salute to you, man. Let me give my thoughts. Now, that story, your update was a bit of a roller coaster. And what I mean by a bit of a roller coaster is I wasn't sure, like, oh, what is he going to do? Is he going to go back to her? Okay, he's not, he's not going to go back at her. He's not going to go back to her. Oh, he's going back. Oh, he's going to do it. No, he's not going back. So it had me up and down. I like that. I enjoy that story. What do you mean? Like your story isn't com isn't nothing compared to other stories. Your your story is great. Everybody's story is great. You guys write in your emails. Don't feel like, hey, well, I was a simp. My story's not going to be that great. People are going to call me a simp. Who cares? Especially if you learned from it and you came out victorious. You you came out and leveled up or something. That's great. That's a that's an amazing story. Things are going to be different. People are different. You're going to react different. It is what it is. Now, reading through this update, I was starting starting to remember certain things in the first story. And I do remember how she so she she did have another guy. And I remember she was telling her her best friend that she's going to ditch that guy. and She wanted you. And that kind of did make you feel good. And I was telling you, like, yeah, I totally understand that. That'll make you feel like, OK, well, she wants me more. But the fact, remember, guys, I don't know whoever heard the story. Remember, she said, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket because I was cheated on before. Who I look like, boo boo the fool. Man, that's more than enough. Screw this lady. Forget her. Forget she plays too many games. You're right. She wanted you to come running back to her. And guess what? You doing the same thing. She would have continued doing the same thing. She thought she was above you. You doing all that stuff is putting her on a pedestal. So what is she doing, guys? You guys say it all the time in the comments. She's looking down on you. What do you guys say? You treat her like a celebrity. She's going to treat you like a fan. If you would have kept doing the same thing, you would have gotten the same results. You did something different. Cool. You know, you're a nice guy. You're probably a really nice guy. So... Yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit to see her hurt. Like, dang, I didn't really want to make her feel that way. Now she thinks my cousin is my girlfriend. So she probably thinks I had someone the whole time. Forget her. It's over. She was playing games with you. She had a she had a good guy and she screwed it up. She ruined it herself. That's her problem. Just like you learned from your situation. She hopefully should learn from her situation not to play with people like that and if she is lucky enough to meet another nice person she'll play her cards right chances are no but you know hey this update was great thank you for sending this in man stay on your purpose your friends that are telling you hey get a hobby whatever it is if you are into art you want to make music you want to learn to play the piano you want to work out, become the best version of yourself, read more, um, whatever it is, whatever career you want to be in, learn more about that industry and that business. Be the best at it. Focus on your purpose. Salute to you, man. And I wish you the best. Feel free to always write in whenever you want to write in. Send me anything. Um, if you want some advice from people in the comments, jump in the comments. Ask. Just ask. How, do, how did you guys get over a girl or whatever? How'd you guys do this, do that? People here, people here will give you great advice. So salute to you, man. I appreciate the email. I appreciate email number one also. Guys, let me know what you think about both emails. 
If you want to send in a story, send it to TrueStoryNation at gmail.com. Here I'll put it on the screen. That's TrueStoryNation at gmail.com. And I will catch you guys at the next one.